Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, continuing my series on catching up on everything that I've missed in the last 18 months in the world of .NET, we're going to take a look at JSON columns in Entity Framework. Let's mash on that. All right, so today's focus is gonna be taking a look at JSON columns, which is a feature that was added to Entity Framework 7. So we're still a version behind here. Uh, but this is a way of storing data inside of the database such that it doesn't create a new table. Uh, it just ends up being a column on an existing entity in the table, in the, the database. Uh, now, maybe two years ago, I would have been pretty dead set against this because it feels like it's a way of doing an end run around doing proper database modeling, just shoving a bunch of data in there. But there are times when you have properties on an entity which are very tightly related to that entity and maybe it doesn't make sense for that to have a lifespan outside of the entity itself. Um, so let's take a look at what that might look like. Um, we have here database that we were working with last time, which is keeping track of vehicles and parking sessions. Uh, so let's expand our vehicle model here a little bit with some notes for that vehicle, because this could be something that a patroller has noticed uh, related to this vehicle. So we're gonna add in a vehicle note class here. Uh, and this just contains a note, which is a string, when it was created and who created it. So let's add that into our vehicle model here too. And we're just gonna add that in as a public list of vehicle notes. Uh, and we'll just set that up like that. Uh, we'll put a default here, just an empty list. Okay. Uh, so if we were to go and create the database now based off of this, we would end up with another table here called vehicle notes. Uh, and this one would be a little bit difficult. We would have to have some sort of um, key on this as well. So probably some sort of ID field here, but it doesn't make a lot of sense, I think, to do that because vehicle notes are very tightly related to a vehicle and it's unlikely that we would ever be interested in vehicle notes outside of using the, the actual vehicle. Uh, so let's go and set up our data model here uh, to save this as a JSON column. So this is going to be a title related field. To do that, we're just going to start here by writing our on model creating here. Uh, so specifically, we're going to be interested in our vehicle entity. Uh, and it's going to own many. Uh, give that a vehicle. It's going to take a vehicle.notes uh, and a builder. Builder is going to builder dot to JSON. Okay. So this is enough to let Entity Framework know that we would like this information to be stored in the database as a JSON column. Yeah. So let's go and run a quick migration here and we will build this thing up. So let's go and add another migration here. We'll just call this one people note. Oops. And then we can pop over once this is done. I guess I would run the migration and see what changes have been made to the database here. So we'll run that migration here. And I'll take a look at our database here, the vehicles table. Uh, and inside the vehicles table, we actually have notes as a varchar max. Uh, so instead of creating another table that's gone and just created another column inside of our vehicle entity uh, and it's just set it to a text column. So that is fairly basic that allows us to add some notes uh, but there's not a huge advantage to doing this but let's make whatever is inside this note just a little bit more complicated so we can take a little bit more advantage of the fact that this is some JSON. So to our note let's add a location piece of information here. 
Uh, so location is just going to be a fairly standard location, name, address, postal code, state, country, uh, and those are all nullable, so we don't need to set any of those in particular. Uh, and in here, we'll create public location, that nullable location get set. Okay, uh, and then we need to return back up here to our mapper and add one little bit extra to let it know that this location information is also going to be stored in this JSON. Owns one. Uh, it's going to be a note, and on the note, we're going to own a location. Okay. Uh, so we've got this in place. Let's go and run our database migration again here, really quickly. Add a new migration here called vehicle location, maybe. And let's see what ends up in our migration for that. So we have a, some migrations here, so people note location. Ah, so that's interesting. This location uh, uh, migration is actually empty. It doesn't do anything. And that's because we're just telling Entity Framework that the object that's stored in that column is a little bit different from what it was originally anticipating. So there's not actually any database changes to this. Uh, there's only Entity Framework model changes. This. So we don't even have to go and run this migration or anything. Um, so let's go and expand our original program here and add a little bit more data into our database to play with so we can see what that looks like. And so I'm gonna just go and steal this long. So we're going to go and add uh, this fairly complicated object in here. Uh, so let's go and execute this again and see what it looks like when we go and do this insert. Okay, so here is our handy dandy interface. Uh, and we're just going to go and run populate again here and see what happens. Okay, so we've now populated the database here. Uh, let's zoom in down here and take a look at what we've got going on here. Okay, uh, so we have inserted a bunch more data here inside the database. It looks like fairly standard insert commands here uh, to just go and populate this information. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like inside of the database. Oops, that wasn't the thing I was looking for here. Uh, so let's go take a look at vehicles here. Select the top thousand rows. This can go away. Okay. So within this, um, we have a bunch of JSON data that's been inserted in here. Uh, and it contains all of the information that we added in. So that's cool. We can put data in here, but what does it look like to get this data back out of the database again? Uh, so you can go and use standard entity framework queries for this, uh, but there are a few little gotchas to watch out for uh, that you're gonna have to pay attention to here. So I'm gonna go here and slap in another endpoint here. So we're going to map get here. Uh, what is this actually? The fucking lock context in this one. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go and retrieve vehicles where the note count is greater than zero. It's going to be the first one of those. And then we're going to take a look at any notes in there. Uh, we're going to take a look at the create time on that and pull that individual note out there. Or I guess this is going to be potentially a list of notes. Let's go and run this one again. Second. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we're going to go and take a look at this comments endpoint here. Try this out and see. What we get back is we'd end up with 
And there we go. So we've got here uh, a selection of notes. There's only one of them here. We can take a look at what that note looks like right here. Uh, and if we drop back down and take a look at the sequel for this, uh, we can see that the SQL that was run here is actually using JSON commands against the database. So this is fairly efficient against the database, perhaps not quite as efficient as querying against uh, a child table, but it's still fairly quick. You can still see there's actual SQL support for this here. Uh, so we've gone and found uh, vehicles and we've looked for vehicles where there is a count of notes that's greater than zero within it here. Uh, and you can see that this has actually worked quite well, even though we have some columns where this is null in the database. So we had some legacy columns um, where we didn't fill that information out, but it's had no problem handling that situation. Uh, one thing to note here is that uh, you don't see anything in here related to the dates. Uh, and that's because we've actually gone and pulled this individual item out here. Uh, and then the rest of this query here, oh, I should switch back here, sorry. Uh, so we've, we've pulled the note out here. Uh, and then the rest of this query here is actually run in the C-sharp code, so in the .NET code. Uh, so this is not being run against the database here. So this is something to just pay a little bit of attention to when you're looking at the efficiency of your queries that you need to pay attention to when those queries are materialized and sent back to your back end, front end, whatever it is, uh, from the database, because uh, some of this stuff is going to run maybe where you're not anticipating it to run. So pay a little bit of attention to that. Uh, but this allows us to put misshapen data into this column and lets us be really uh, flexible in the data that we pull from this. So a lot of times uh, you might end up with bits of data like a meta column uh, that you need to attach to this entity. Doesn't make a lot of sense to be able to query it outside, but when you're querying specifically this entity, you want to be able to pull that information out. Uh, and this is a, a shortcut to do it. So a lot easier than building a bunch of other tables, reduces the concept count a little bit inside of your system since you don't see quite as many tables when you load it up. Um, but this is a really interesting approach and I'm quite a big fan of it now, I think. Um, maybe you're not, let me know in comments below. Uh, I think that's everything today. So remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody next time. Bye.